So the transfer portal's been on fire. It's been on fire for quite a while, and I, I really don't think that there's any kind of extinguisher out there. This is more like a grease fire, and so it's not put out in traditional manner. So right now, the transfer portal, every time you refresh your phone, you got new names coming and going. Jackson Dart is a name I'm fascinated with right now, transferring from Southern Cal. Now, here's the way people are telling the story. Jackson Dart's leaving USC because Caleb Williams went to USC. Well, that may be the proper way to tell the story a week from now or a month from now. The second part of that story has not technically happened yet. The first part has. So Jackson Dart's in the portal. Caleb Williams, as of this broadcast, is not officially at USC. More on that in just a second. This was a four-star rated kid out of Utah, and it's important to note, as we did, I think, right after signing day when we were talking about him, I remember talking to some of our guys on the West Coast about Jackson Dart, and he was a very difficult eval because there was not a lot of good film of him because of what COVID had done. And so they, they put a very, very lofty grade on him, but there was still some internal discussion. Did we make him, did we rate him high enough? And he went to USC and immediately started making noise in uh, fall camp out there. He's a good player. He's a really good player. And right now, I think as of this moment, he's in Norman. So he's been visiting Oklahoma. Ole Miss is heavily involved here. Now, here's what's fun. Jeff Levy, who was Lane Kiffin's offensive coordinator, he is now at Oklahoma. And so if this is down to OU and Oklahoma, and there may be other programs involved, TCU may have been involved. But if it does come down to Norman or Oxford, you got a guy who was the OC for Lane Kiffin 15 minutes ago, probably trying to negative recruit against Kiffin. That's probably what's got to happen there. It may make you want to wash your hands or take a shower to think about, but that's, that's kind of the way the coaching carousel meets the transfer portal in this day and age. Also, Mike Trigg, the tight end who's transferring from USC, also on a visit to Oklahoma today. Now, here's the dark horse. I don't know to what degree there is validity here, but the fun dark horse for me, and I think maybe just the one I'll root for, is West Virginia. Graham Harrell, who was the OC out at USC, he is at West Virginia. This is a big underrated hire for Neil Brown up in Morgantown. And if they were to pull Jackson Dart, that would be phenomenal. It would be phenomenal for the Big 12. It would be phenomenal for us because I want to talk about West Virginia. I love the program. There are some programs that I used to play back when I played the video game long time ago, I used to play with West Virginia. Now that would have been like Pat White, West Virginia, but I used to play with West Virginia. So I'm pulling for West Virginia. Plus I love John Denver. Uh, how about Caleb Williams? So Caleb Williams, it's just a foregone conclusion to most that he's gonna land at USC. It'll be a, an interesting ordeal if he doesn't. So right now, the status of Caleb Williams, again, we're live at uh, 7.39 in the PM, no, not 7.40 on this Thursday night. The status is he's in the portal. Now, he's already visited out there. He's been in L.A., been spotted at, at courtside at Laker games, I think. So he's out there. Yes, of course. Or maybe the Chargers game he was at. I think he'll end up at USC. It would surprise me if he didn't end up at USC. I just think that even though everyone assumes it, watch what happens. If slash when that news becomes official, it will still feel like a bomb went off. It, it's kind of like when something that's assumed is actually verified. You know, you assume that Georgia could win a national championship. Well, then they won one. It's a huge deal. Well, it's the same way in the transfer portal. You can talk about this all you want to. When it becomes official, it'll be really big. And then also you're going to want to watch who else or whomst else that's in the transfer portal follows. What kind of ripple effect or tsunami effect does that have? Because that's the kind of keystone player that does indeed have that kind of ripple effect. Um, that's about all there is to say about that. Miller Moss is another quarterback that's on the roster. And there are a lot of people who like Miller Moss, too. Uh, there's, no, there's no smart money on whether his future is impacted by this, but just something to watch there. Very important early cog in the wheel for Lincoln Riley. What about these Alabama departures? Several of them. This was predictable. I don't quite think it was predictable that Jaleel Billingsley was going to go from starting the national championship game to in the transfer portal the next day some would argue, based on his level of play, he was in the transfer portal before the game began. I, it's one of the most disappointing performances I've seen on a big stage from an effort standpoint in quite a while from Jaleel Billingsley. Am I salty because we prop bet him? Absolutely, I am. And by the way, I haven't addressed this. Notice they threw to him a couple of times on the opening drive. That's all I'm going to say about it. 
I, I feel good about the intel we had. I feel horrible about the execution and the effort level. So Jaleel Billingsley, the tight end, he's in the portal. Drew Sanders, also in the portal. Now, both of these guys are highly ranked in the transfer portal rankings. It's very important to note now, there's gonna be a theme, I think, emerge. And it ties in closely. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and lump another guy in with this. Pay attention to Mario Williams, the wide receiver from Oklahoma, very highly rated guy. He was the talk of spring practice there. He's in the portal as well. Texas has all these dudes on the radar. Texas has Mario Williams. I, I think he either has visited there already or is going to visit there. But Texas has their eye on Jaleel Billingsley. They got their eye on Drew Sanders. In fact, I would lean Texas for Drew Sanders. These are guys who would be immediate impact there. Now, I was looking at Mike Roach over on Horns 24-7 talking about this earlier today. I, I, I would choose to view these guys not as a package deal, but I don't view them individually. Like, I think you could have multiples of this group. And then also, you got a guy like Shane Lee transferring from Alabama. Jalen Moody, linebackers, both of them, transferring from Alabama. There's a lot of people who are trying to assume that because both of those inside backer types are leaving, maybe it means Henry Toa Toa and or Christian Harris are returning. That could be, that could be the case, but I don't think there's necessarily correlation there. What I'm saying is in the past, you've come to view Nick Saban as this master roster manager, and he is and has been. So where you now just assume, well, if those players are leaving, it's directly tied to something else that's happening on the roster. It could be the case. What I'll tell you is don't assume that's the case. Right now, it could just be that one or both of those linebackers that started this year for Alabama are transferring, or, or go into the draft, and these dudes just want to transfer anyway. And that could be Nick Saban's reaction. He could not be happy about it. There's not always design, is what I'm trying to tell you, behind the way that things work on a roster in the transfer portal era. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. The transfer portal rankings, though, are very fun to watch. Uh, the, this, is, this is a huge slice of the roster pie now. You've got to pay attention to it. It is our, it is our best performing repeated topic like we, we do this a lot and the videos just get eaten up so I know everyone's interested in it and you should be I mean Michigan State overmade their team they overhauled the team overnight just by using the transfer portal